coming back to the US after like Christmas time um, that because they said, oh, you need to get like a COVID test so you can board the flight because there's a UK variant before you come in. And I was like, okay, good. They're, it's a good thing to like, I need to get tested. I'm glad they're doing like procedures and stuff. Um, and so I got a test that went through, through like the NHS, which is the National Health Service. Like, and I got like the three day, the PCR one, which is supposed to be like way more accurate. Um, and it then is the more ni- accurate, yeah. Yeah. And the night before my flight, I found out that that was not valid to get entry onto the plane and that I had to get a rapid test and it had to come from a private institution. So you had to pay for it. A private institution, what, like Harvard? Yeah, Harvard. <laughs> they put the insignia in the in the swab so yeah. that when you blow your nose, it's just little H's come out. <laughs> no, it, it was, um, yeah, it was through uh, Oxford University and they give you... Um, they give you a diploma along with along with your uh, test result. It was it was nice. It was expensive, but it was nice. If it's um, from Oxford, probably your test instead of saying uh, not detected, it goes negative. Governor. <laughs> That's how they all sound, right? The re- yeah, please. Do. <laughs> I love that you think that. Like, um, <laughs> sorry, my voice is high. Um, yeah, are you going through that, puberty? Yeah, again. Um, I love that you think that like Oxford, which is like super high, it's like the highest of the high of a university is like, oh, Cockney boys and girls going there. It's just, oh, hello, Gov. Do you mind Mother, we... put a sock in it. I <laughs> said I was going to Oxford and not Cambridge and that's final. <laughs> Wait, can you do like your best like posh sort of like, eh, can you do like. Oh yeah. Um. Okay. This is how Prince Harry speaks. He's like, because I was sad that I had to be there. And then this is how... That's like Buffalo Bill. <laughs> I played like Buffalo Silence Bill Bones. in the fifth grade. Oh, no, not oh. from Silence. I didn't... Oh, my God, imagine we put on a fifth grade Silence of the Lambs. <laughs> <laughs> I meant I played Buffalo Bill in Annie Get Your Gun. And it was honestly a oh. career-defining role. I was so I in character. It. It was, I was really, they, they justified it to me. I wanted to be Annie, but you know, that thing they do in theater yeah. when they're lying to you about how good you are. They're oh, like yeah. pretending you're really, what if they were like, you're the only one who could play this role. Oh yeah. They were like, you're the only one who could play Buffalo Bill. Like, listen, we wanted you to be Annie, but you're the only one who could do this. And I felt so powerful. I was like, oh. I'm the only Buffalo Bill. But realistically, there were a lot of boys in the class. I think they all could have played Buffalo Bill. <laughs> Oh, we do. Did you like look down at the girl who played, or was it a boy who played uh, Annie? It was not a gender fluid production. Of Annie. <laughs> yeah, Annie was non-binary. Um, right. And get your gun meant get your uh, gender identity right. <laughs> <laughs> it was oh, honestly oh. a very politically incorrect play. It was not like right. <laughs> well, I was thinking it would be funny if like um. If he, if uh, she was if she was like oh it's so cool rehearsing this show and she and but deep down you were like anyone could play your part you're nothing you're you're less than nothing you're you know what's interesting dust. was I was actually very impressed by both of the girls who ended up playing Annie one Wait, of both. them was it oh was one an understudy was, no it was double cast oh I was also okay. double cast as Buffalo Bill what who who was the other one um her name was Madeline she was uh. She was a nice enough girl. Was she enough of a force to play BB? I don't think so. Mm. Did she try and give it her all? Yes. Was she a better singer? Good. No question. Oh, no, okay. No question. Um, did she have the presence I did? Uh, absolutely not. And I would tell what her that you, to her what face. Did, what did you bring to the role that was unique to you? Oh, Lucas, what didn't I bring to the role? Charisma uniqueness nerve and talent (laughs) as rupaul says i brought a sense of like a of real character acting like i okay i remember being like i am not a fifth grade girl i'm a grown man and i sat backstage all right actually so embarrassing that i'm about to tell you this i'm so excited i sat backstage getting into the role And there was a mm-hmm. moment where I was sitting, I was like, sit like a man sits, like think like a man thinks. Mm. And then I just imagined a dick between my legs. 
that like I have I don't to... think that's embarrassing at all I think it's helping you get into the role sure but it's mortifying to think that I like a 10 year old was like let me get so into method acting this buffalo pill bill character well, me... that I have, that I imagine I have an adult sized human dick even though I'm like a child <laughs> oh my god that's so sweet <laughs> And then I crushed it. I brought a lot well, of- if like, it works, it works. Fucking like- I brought backstory, you know, Buffalo Bill. He was uh, he was always a real showboat and he wanted to come to the yeah. theater. Uh, I had this great- this is his big shot to make Yeah, this big. is his big shot to make it great. I, I had great chemistry with my co-lead uh, or rather secondary lead because the leads are Frank and Annie. They're the like romantic. Oh, and this was crazy. The two- the guy who played Frank and the girl who played Annie dated for a day in the fifth grade. Whoa. I know. It was hot, scalding hot tea. I think oh I had a huge God. crush on one of the girls who played Annie and I didn't realize it till later. Wow. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. Was it, was it a bit like the Kit Harrington and Rose Leslie? Because they like played like, did you watch ever Game of Thrones? I watched a little bit of it. I didn't watch the whole thing. Okay. Well, they played uh, Jon Snow and Ygritte, and they were they were a couple on the show, and they're married in real life, and they just had a baby. And oh, it's that's like cute. very big. Or also like um, uh, Frankie and Marta from School of Rock that are the actors who play Yes, the, they're actually together. Oh, my God. And yeah. uh, um, we're watching Gilmore Girls. Uh, Rory Gilmore and Jess Mariano, their characters were dating, and uh milo uh ventima pasta and alexis bodell dated in real life his real name is not ventima pasta but i can't uh, pronounce it's, it it's too italian ventimiglia oh god you're gonna hit me with pronunciation <laughs> it's ventima pa i'm venting the pasta it's ventima pasta milo ventima pasta show it milo ventimiglia permettere sulla pasta si yeah, this he's a, a oh, this he's is a no-no. He's, he's a, a no -no. tiny grandma. Yeah, go. Oh, he's a no-no. <laughs> he's a no-no. Well, that's well, what that Alexis is... Bledel said when she broke up with him. She said, "You're a no-no." Oh well, well, that's actually what grandpa is in Italian. I remember that from college Italian. See, I've no -no. only known of no no, but I kind of thought no-no yeah. was like a joke word, like that it was not a real. It was like, oh, you're if you're a male grandma, you're a no-no. But I realize a male grandma is just a grandpa. It's a grandpa. <laughs> That awful moment where you just come up with the right answer. <laughs> Have I told you that, by the way, speaking of gendered language, oh, yeah. um, I was told recently that, do you want to guess what a gender neutral name is for a niece or a nephew? Wait, I actually want, I actually want to, is it like, um, is it like a Nix or is it, or is it like a, next or is Nick's, it next like... would be better next would also be better okay what is it it's nibbling <laughs> <laughs> which at that no! point just let your arms no! gender you <laughs> no, no 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 i mean i don't know i think all of this goes to show is there need to be better language for non-binary people because i feel like the oh. english language does everything in their power to make being non-binary sound ridiculous it's like, oh, oh you want to not have a gender? We're going to call you a, a nibble. See how you like that. That's so bad. I don't know why, but do you, have you ever heard that TikTok audio where it's just like, it's like a few seconds of silence. And then it just says, I think I'd prefer if you just call me a slur. Just like. Yes. Yes. That's from uh, the rainbow capitalism thing. That was like. <laughs> oh, the, okay. Uh, what did, uh, what did Budweiser say? They had a poster that said, um, let's get beers tonight queen like lgbtq oh and then the guy was like i think i'd prefer if you just called me a slur <laughs> <laughs> oh no oh my nibbling that is oh that's bad but that that actually does remind me though because i am um, uh, a friend of mine from college who at the time was non-binary but i think is now actually a trans woman anyway but at the time at the time non-binary and I asked her when it was a them and I was like hey oh because you have a sister who wants to have kids one day have you thought about what you would want potential kids of hers to call you and uh 
And my friend was just like, I would just prefer my name, just like just my name. And I was like, all right, that's a fair, that's a fair answer. And but now I wanted to be like Unclant, just like <laughs> would be inconvenient if your name was nibbling. It oh, oh. this is my nibbling, nibbling. <laughs> <laughs> if your name was nibbling, but it was actually a girl, it was like, this is my niece nibbling. Oh, is it a niece <laughs> or a nibbling? It's a niece, but it's nibbling. What? <laughs> don't understand <laughs> uh, this is my ni- this is my uh, niece her name is nibbling and this is my nibbling oh what's oh what's their name it's kai niece. it's <laughs> <laughs> her name is niece yeah and then there's just one person named kai who's kai <laughs> no one knows they just walked in the house they're not even part of the family it's like wedding crashes they just say yeah one of uncle ned's kids just <laughs> they just make up a fake story while they're in the family oh wow oh my god but as I was saying, uh, that I, uh, uh, getting back to America uh, back in like uh, for January 1st or so, and that I had to scramble to like find a, a private institution that I could get as, uh, that I could get a rapid test for. And I was like getting really scared because I thought, oh my God, I'm not going to be able to find a place to get a test. I'm going to be stuck here for like weeks. And then miracle of miracles, I found a place that was taken, well, that was also like, I found places, but some of them weren't open on a Saturday and some of them were open on a Saturday, but didn't have appointments available. So miracle of miracles, I find a place that is open. It's actually not too far off the path to the airport. And so I was like, okay. And it was like, it wasn't even a warehouse. It was like a a building of sheds behind (laughs) a warehouse and that we parked and my mom was like this place looks awful i was like i know <laughs> and so we went inside and then happily once we got inside it was like oh this is like a pop up location where people like it, it's like an unorthodox location but once it was set up they had like um you know those like fake walls yeah. sort of like those fold out walls to like give privacy and there were like professional nurses and doctors there and i was like oh it's just like they're using the space and it was like and it was like very cool and good but um and i got my negative test result and what was interesting is that when i landed in america and i was going about to go to customs and i was in like this tunnel going through to customs and there were these three women in like armor and like face guards just going stop 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 stop!" like they were holding like their hands like buckingham palace yeah and then you couldn't make them laugh is that is that what happened to you when you tried to storm Buckingham Palace? What it was, yeah. I try. I did like an opposite of like storming the Capitol, but everyone else went right. to the Capitol, and I was like, "Let me storm the Buckingham Palace." Let me get a flight. <laughs> <laughs> I got a flight. I went to Buckingham Palace. I was like, "Is Trump here?" They were like, "No, that's at the next riot." I was like, "Ah, oh, shit, yeah. I missed it." Oh, but did you ever see the Crown? I actually haven't watched The Crown yet. I'm very regretful okay. that I haven't. It My is, grandma it, loves it. Oh, I I adore the show. And I, I like got really into like uh, royal documentaries. But what I wanted to say was that um, in terms of like storming Buckingham Palace, there is, there is an episode um, surrounding this dude who just walked, who practically just walked into Buckingham Palace one night. Like he noticed that there was like a blind spot in like the guards and he just climbed the fence. It's based just, on a true story. Hundred percent true story. This is all in all the newspapers. It was it was in like the late eighties or something. But uh, th- what happened was the dude just walked in, and he went straight to Queen Elizabeth's room, and woke her up from her sleep. And she was like, "Who the fuck are you?" And she was like, "And, and that's it's, and, oh, but, terrifying." Yeah, it is so scary, but I got to hand it to them. They made it a really interesting sort of meaningful story about like his background and why he went and like why how it did impacted he do it? the queen. Um, I don't want to spoil the episode for you. Okay. Actually, because that was a, that's probably a big part of the episode, right? Is it the is, why? No, actually, the reason why um, he wants to see her is actually a big it's it, it, there's a it's an important plot and it's and it's a really it's a very good episode and i would hope you and all of our listeners and viewers watch it um but no were you gonna say something uh no i was simply gonna say that i think it's crazy that the queen is ultimately not that protected because i have always thought like okay the buckingham palace guys mm-hmm. i say it like they're the mafia the yeah. buckingham palace guys they're just 
they're carrying like guns but who's to say if they even work like they don't look like they work and they're in these stupid hats i mean honestly thank god there's no like actual hardened criminals in london probably don't fact check this podcast because <laughs> there is no crime in london there is just no do you guys know not this? even pickpockets <laughs> like in the movies like london has a zero percent crime rate <laughs> Ever since The Crown came out and that one episode about the guy who snuck into the palace, everyone was like, well, that sounds like a crime. We're not going to do yeah. anything like that anymore. No murder, <laughs> no nothing. Yeah. Well, I will say this isn't as much like, this isn't really a spoiler for the episode, but the guy I think did like um, a renovation. I think he was like a painter for like, um, for like indoor painting for like doing renovations and stuff. And when... And he does say in the episode, like when he like talks to the queen, like spring her up, he's like, you know, this place is really like shabby. Like, like it's, it's, it's kind of pretty, but like the, uh, the upholstery is terrible. He's, he's like, I'm she's sure like, that's sh- true. He's I'm sure talking. honestly, yeah. like the worst best Western is like b- more well-kept than the palace. And I oh, say sure. that because I think there's probably so much bureaucracy around making any change that they just have not changed anything in years. Like in my old office, for example, yeah, we had this bench in the bathroom. Nobody knew why it was there. It was rickety. It like didn't do anything. It was in a weird place. No one actually needs to like sit down in a place that's not the toilet in the bathroom. No one just needs to like contemplate. (laughs) And like, it wasn't even good for like putting your clothes on, like if you were changing for an event or something, because the clothes would fall off because the bench was so rickety. Was it, was it like a public style bathroom, like stalls or was it a private? No, it was a private individual bathroom with this. Okay. That makes more sense. Because if it was stalls with a bench, (laughs) wow. (laughs) A bench in one stall. (laughs) But this, this bench at one point I suggested, cause I was an office assistant. I was like, we should change the bench to something that's more functional, right? Something that like, if a bunch of girls are in there changing for an event or something, you know, they could like, you know, they could all sit on it or they could all, I don't know, poop in each other's laps or something. I don't know what people. Nice. Do. <laughs> uh, but the, the guy I spoke to about it was like, no, uh, we would actually have to run that by the CEO because he's very particular about the office. Whoa. I was like, I don't think we need to run it by the CEO. It's a bench and it doesn't work. And he was like, I don't know. If like, he has complaints, just sit, just be like, just come send- see me. I'm begging you. Just like. They wouldn't do it. And the bench never got changed because they wow. were so afraid that this guy was going to notice the bench was different. And he never even really said anything that inflammatory when he didn't like something. He would just be like, this fucking bench sucks. And then walk away. Or like, if he didn't, one time he didn't like the candy in the office and he was like, oh, this candy should be British or something. He's British. And then we all had to just change the candy in the office because like he had so much power. Everything he said went, but like, because of that, like nothing, unless he said like, fuck X, Y, and Z, like nothing changed. And I'm sure that's, if it's like this with like essentially a random guy who runs a company, who's to say the Royals? You probably, if the toilet broke and like nobody could poop correctly, they would probably not change that toilet without like 30 But signals. they were allowed to poop incorrectly. <laughs> I mean, the queen is really old, Lucas. I don't think she gets it out correctly. It just come out of her hip, just like, just. <laughs> not her. Not her hip, her That's elbow. That's very incorrect. Obviously. <laughs> yeah, whoa. It's like, whoa, that was not the correct way to do that. There's a more correct way to poop. Just feel like someone walks in like, Jesus, Liz, put some effort into it. Liz! Who do you think calls her Liz? Well, I know that her nickname uh, since she was a child was Lilybit. That's not a nickname. That's literally longer than Elizabeth. Elizabeth. Lily bit okay it's one, <laughs> it's one syllable shorter yeah that's not a nickname my full name is gabrielle people call me gabby okay well that's also one syllable short but oh. 
you shouldn't have a complicated nickname that your nickname shouldn't be like oh my name's lucas but you can call me rosadoodle like what <laughs> that's basically that's twice that's twice as many that's okay twice as many. my name is lucas but you can call me that's what that sounded like to me lizadoodle lizadoodle that's actually kind of a cool nickname lizadoodle <laughs> Liz kind of fun. come here yo what's up lizadoodle my my sister used to call me uh it's it's because there was a, a character on i on icarly named gibby instead of oh, gabby she gabby. called me gibby that's cute and then flabby gabby was shortened to flibby gibby and she would sing like an ABBA song parody of it. Like instead of Mama Mia, she'd be like, Flibby Gibby. Flibby Gibby. <laughs> Here we go again. My, oh. my, just another flibster. That's so fucking cute. Songs oh. are the best. Wait, I, but I, I don't think you ever said, what would you have put in that bathroom instead of the bench? I would have put either. Given free reign. Free, oh. Well, free, free rain. rain, hot Carte tub. Blanche. <laughs> hot tub. You poop, and then instead of the bidet, you walk into the freaking hot tub, get it out. For 30 minutes. <laughs> for th you, it ha mandatory 30 minutes. Everyone has to take their lunch break every time they poop. And then <laughs> it's a it's a self-cleaning operation. So it's not like you have to, you know, clean out the hot tub every time someone mm. goes in to like clean their butts in there. Okay. It automatically weaponizes chemicals that clean your poop so that the next person it's completely sanitized for. Wait, clean your poop for what purpose? What so, was the poop used for? <laughs> <laughs> what I'm saying is you don't want a, if you you asked if I was given free reign, but I would do. So here's what I would do. You go to the bathroom you go you do not wipe you're not allowed to wipe you have to go immediately into the hot tub and then it acts as a bidet and it cleans you nice then you leave and it sanitizes so that it's not like it's just like you're pooping there for the next person then you have to go to another station in the bathroom <laughs> and get a pedicure it doesn't matter how many times you've been to the bathroom that day. You have to get the same pedicure every single time. What, who or what is doing the pedicure? It's a robot. It's not it's a, a robot. Okay. I would never subject a person to this. <laughs> to just so, live in the bathroom? <laughs> I guess it's not fair to do to a robot either. Because that robot would come alive and be like, I've seen some things. <laughs> the robot has to do your nails and talk to you about your day. Because <laughs> it's also a therapy robot. Oh. Then shortly after doing that, you'd put on slippers and a robe, and then you'd go to the next station, <laughs> which is um, <gasps> in like a hallway away from the bathroom so you don't get the poop smell. So wait, now you're building extensions <laughs> to the bathroom? Yes. You gave me free reign. Never oh. get, you should know by now, never give me free reign on this podcast. <laughs> then it's far away from like the poop okay. smell of the bathroom. You, yeah. you get a buffet and oh. you have to go. And then obviously buffets- What's like, available at the buffet? Is there everything, a theme? Is, okay. Everything. Well, it's like how real buffets are, how there's no theme. Real buffets <laughs> are chaos. It's like, you want yeah. some Indian food, s'mores and uh, <laughs> freaking pasta carbonara. It's like, you know what? Somehow, yes, I do. <laughs> so it's all of that. Okay. And then what else do they have at buffets? Crab legs. Oh, I no! I remember when I was ten, my fa my parents and I we went to Las Vegas and we uh, did the buffet in the Bellagio Hotel, and my mom and I we just went to town on the crab legs. They were amazing. That's where we're going tomorrow, Vegas. But our flight nice. got canceled oh. because of stupid. I don't know why. They actually didn't even give us a reason. They emailed me saying your flight is canceled, as if to be like. It's immoral now. <laughs> Your flight is canceled. Oh, that's Sis, that's we've a great, canceled it. That is such a good premise for a joke. Is like what flights did on Twitter <laughs> to deserve. Oh my god, yeah, that's true. Like your flight is canceled. Oh shit, what did it do? Yeah, I mean, I met flights at a party yeah. a while back, and it was kind of creepy. 
your flight your flight thought that trans women deserve to uh, deserve their own place separate from cis women <laughs> just like in the dialogue your the, your flight is actually flight. an airline that separates trans women and cis <laughs> women so the trans women all have to fly on one plane oh my god i would do anything to be on a plane full of trans women because i feel like the trans women like you and I both know are like some of just the funniest people I've ever, I mean. Oh yeah. Imagine being on a plane with Chris Scher. No, I, th- oh no, in nothing but Chris Scher, just like lots of variations of Chris Scher. I would love that. We flight. can't assume all trans women are like Chris Scher, but like, sure ba- let's, let's imagine <laughs> another comedian friend of ours, Bailey Pope. Let's imagine she's oh, yeah, there. Yeah. Everyone else who we know who's trans will be there and other people we don't know who are hilarious, who are trans, they'll be on the plane, but they're going to have to separate us because we're on the cis plane because that's what my flight was canceled for doing is being transphobic. (laughs) My flight was canceled because it was too transphobic. Okay, but to wrap this this bathroom thing up, you you go to the buffet, you eat everything, and then Mm -hmm. you immediately leave, but then you realize you have to poop again, so you have to do it all over and then you never go back to work. That's my Whoa. ideal bathroom. Um, short of that, I would have just put a chair. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think if I was um, if I was doing that, I think that I would set maybe a, a vanity. I would maybe have like a vanity uh, mirror so you could like check yourself Ooh. and like, and they give you like a bunch of like a little. Um, creams and, and potions and stuff that you can use to like freshen yourself up and that uh but uh that but that you also have a robot that gives you a, a massage not a pedicure but a massage that do you know nice. that there are robots now who are like serving who? as <laughs> i love that you... <laughs> i treat them as people ever since i heard about sophia the robot Oh, is that the one that like declared a person by like Saudi Arabia? Is that one? Yeah. Yeah. Which like, is she problematic? Who's to say? But let's have her write a seven part uh, wizard series and then see what happens in a few years after. Oh my God. Sophia the turf. (laughs) (laughs) She's on this. See, there's actually in the airline we came up with the trans and the cis airline. There's actually a separate plane for robot women. (laughs) Okay. Where do robots need to go? <laughs> She's like, which way do I go? Am I a trans bot? Am I a cis bot? Okay, but Sophia, anyway. But- this is an episode of Futurama. I 100% saw this as an episode of Futurama. But this go is on, please. Black Mirror. This is, so there's oh, these. Oh, that would be a good, okay. So it go would on. be, a, it would be a good Black Mirror for sure. So there are these, there are these robots that are like uh, pets for the elderly because a lot of the elderly got like left alone during COVID, people couldn't visit. So they literally created like robots to like keep them company as pets, companions. It's really interesting. And sometimes they were like used and active so much by like the elderly that their batteries would run out. So it was essentially like they were being loved to death. I know I know I don't know know why but this reminds me of like an experiment of like um I think it was like a baby like honestly it might have been a baby meerkat or a marmoset or some sort of little very tiny mammal a meerkat or a marmoset because this is the namesake of our podcast and you can't tell them apart it might as well be a penguin (laughs) um your flight is canceled my flight is canceled no, but I remember like I saw like this experiment on like some sort of science show. I don't even remember what it was for, but it was like it was like showing it was like they made two sort of robot mothers, like a sort of like a, a like that looked like this baby's mother. It was like a baby little creature. And like one was like bare. It was just like a wire cage and with like a bottle of milk sticking through so that it could like eat and then the other one like had no milk but it was like covered in fur and it was like softer to touch and so it was like it was like finding out like what is more valuable to a baby to that baby animal and like the baby just went and just like hugged its mom just like clutching it for dear life and I was like dude you tore it away from its mom I think that's the point of this is that you just like you ruined this kid's day just like (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> robots to ruin a kid's day. Now that's a Black Mirror episode. You that's get just a- Chuck E. Cheese. Oh, come on. You know, Lucas, when I was little, I would have done anything to go to a Chuck E. Cheese because that one at the Barclay Center did not exist yet. Oh, I was taken to it once. It was for a friend's birthday in elementary school. Um, What'd you think? I, I was like, it's okay. It was like, <laughs> it was like, it was kind of like of all of the experiences I had as a child with that, that I had built up in my mind, it was like the most hand job like. It was like, oh, interesting. It's the it's like dry it was very, hand job of theme parks. It was like, it's fine. It was like, yeah play games and shit um i, I it, there was nothing special about it the pizza was very mediocre it was very the pizza yeah. uh, the pizza is not the appeal for sure it's the I it's part of the say, name it's it's the third part of, it's the cheese there's there's charles have... entertainment cheese yes what are the other three components what are the other components no 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 no, no. it's just the cheese where else? Where uh, else in the Chuck E. Cheese do you That's get any morsel of cheese? That's just his last name, Lucas. That's not a. It's... No, I got Chuck. I need. I need the E. <laughs> I need ecstasy. <laughs> then what is it Chuck for? You just throw stuff. I don't know. You chuck it. That would be like know. if every time you came into a room, they were like, "I need more uh, Arnold energy," because like, <laughs> that's the other component of this. Yeah. <laughs> need more Lucas Arnold. I know. That does remind me. I'm pretty sure that like when Dave Chappelle stays at a hotel, uh, he signs in as Charles Edward Cheese. Oh, I like that. Oh. Yeah. Good for I love that he's just like I'm not pretending this this fake name has no use to me anymore because I'm just telling people what my yeah. name is. <laughs> Why do celebrities do that again? They sign in as someone different because I think no, they make the reservation under a, that name. Um, so it's like so that there's no anticipation. Like if you were like, oh, oh I'm Brad, yeah. if you come in like, yeah, I'd like to stay at this Best Western and uh, what's your name? Brad Pitt. And then like <laughs> But then um, what happens if it's a different Brad Pitt? Well, you, there has to there has to be other Brad Pitts out there. I know that there are other like Nick Jonases. I know yes. I saw a BuzzFeed video of like a dude who's like, yeah, my name is Nick Jonas. Sorry to disappoint. I've been saying this for years. And like <laughs> his whole life is just disappointing people because a lot of people think that it's going to be like the famous Nick Jonas. I tried Googling Brad Pitt, but I like couldn't finish the Google search. I was thinking of doing Brad Pitt, not the celebrity, but okay. So I typed in Brad Pitt, not here's what comes up. Do you want to hear? Oh, please. First result, Brad Pitt, not aging well. No, no. He ages amazingly. I know this is insulting. Brad Pitt, not real in Fight Club. That's a spoiler. Okay. Brad Pitt, not on Instagram. Brad Pitt, not at BAFTAs. Brad Pitt, not dating. Brad Pitt, not aging. Brad Pitt not tall. Oh, wait, how tall is he? I need to look it up. Brad Pitt height. Isn't it amazing? You can just find out. Oh, he's 5'11". That's fi- That's as tall as me. I could look him in the eye and kiss him on the lips and tell him how good You're five You're 5'11"? Yeah. I've always believed 5'11 was a fake height. Do you know what's annoying is how many people are like, 5'11 isn't a real height. If you're 5'11, you say you're six feet. And if you're 5'9, you say you're 5'11. I'm like, why are people lying i was just i was just genuinely concerned i was like why is everyone lying i'm well we've spoken about this before like people are very weird about height for sure like i know i'm weird about height i would like to be taller i feel like a chihuahua sometimes like wait wait what height would you like to be i'd like to be five seven i think i could pull that off i I could pull off having like a big you know like tall girl personality like i I want to have one I know, but as a short person, I want to be Netflix's tall girl. Do you remember that movie? I remember. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, can I just, I remember this, like, this TikTok that I saw of, um, it was like, it was like her saying, how tall is she? Like six, one or six, two in the movie. She's like, <laughs> she's, she's tall. like, yeah, I go to an American high school and I'm super tall. Everyone looks at me and gawks at me and my life sucks or just something along those lines and then it cuts to like this um 
this i think he's like he's south asian i don't know what but he's like south asian daisy and he's just looking he's like he has the camera very close to his face and, and like a, after she's like complaining about being tall being the tall girl in high school it just cuts to him just going i'm an immigrant <laughs> <laughs> oh it was that made me laugh so much i really appreciate also in the movie she has a black best friend and like there's just no such thing as racism, but there is tallism in this movie. That's <laughs> like, amazing. I'm pretty sure this black character doesn't have a single arc of her own. I mean, I've never seen it, but the trailer sure makes it look like that because at one point the black girl goes, don't say that about my best friend. And it's like, okay, well you really shoehorn this close oh my God. friendship in here. I could see an argument to be made that this gawking tall girl is the uh the i heard glow butler say at that show the poc of white people about gingers oh yeah yeah, yeah. but i think that the... may be true about just extremely tall white teenagers honestly i well that reminds me i did see a show on tlc about like these kids that are extraordinarily tall like six nine plus and there is like this girl who like she's uh, she's on the basketball team she's very athletic she's good but like dating is super hard for her and i'm like and that's a real that's a real issue because it's not i typical. know and they it's explore it in this movie oh yeah at length yeah <laughs> from that's, the trailer i watched at length from zero to six nine um <laughs> at tall length <laughs> in the in the trailer there's like a guy who is tall and she pines over him meanwhile her short male best friend who has been in love with her since kindergarten mm -hmm. is right oh. there. And I'm sure they get together at the end, but I don't, you know, I didn't see the movie. So. Oh. Cause clearly I, I think I've I can just speak for tall women. Yeah. <laughs> that's another airplane. Have you, oh yeah, that's another, have you ever put on like stilts and like walked around? I, ha I can't say I've had the pleasure of putting on stilts. Have you worn stilts? Yeah, it's fun. Don't say that as if everyone does this once. It's not Euro tripping. <laughs> yeah, haven't you done stilts? Yeah. You know, you're allowed to when you're 21. You've never fucking lived, bro? Just like, no. Maybe, maybe I've done stilts once, but it was clearly yeah. such an unremarkable experience that, or rather, should I say, clearly the stilts were not that tall because I mm. feel like I would have remembered it. Do you know what? That weirdly, that reminds me of another thing, which is that I heard like someone, and it's just a rumor. But someone told me that, like, you know, Ronan Farrow? Yes, of course. All right. So he looks incredibly like Frank Sinatra. We can all agree that he just, he looks like Frank Sinatra's son. Because he's his child. Exactly. But I heard this rumor saying that, like, Mia Farrow told him that he had to look more like him and, like, got, like, surgery to make his legs longer so that he would be taller instead of, like, short little Woody Allen and I was like what and so that I'm I so hate this shook. rumor I, I I'm so shook to be fair there's only one way I could see this rumor being true okay if you're married if you were ever married to Woody Allen you probably hate him so much that mm. you're like I will do anything to make my child not look like this short twink asshole yeah it's probably even a too flattering to call him a twink uh my other no, argument no, we, we know twinks let's not besmirch we know yeah name. we're besmirch the good <laughs> we shall not besmirch thy twink <laughs> oh that's a good title besmirch um, thy twink okay i'm writing it down yeah we, we it. will not forget listeners yep. um i was gonna say i think that a uh, leg expanding surgery probably does not exist um i think it does i think i actually do think it is a thing that is like really difficult and really painful and a bitch to like recover from but i do think it is possible also ronan farrow is a journalist so i feel like if he had gotten leg surgery he would simply be like this is this traumatizing thing my mother <laughs> made me go through so that i looked more like the singer frank sinatra <laughs> I feel like it would have been in his monetary interest to write like a explosive article about that. Yeah, I, I don't think it's real. 
I just don't like when I see Ronan Farah. I think no, he's. I think he's like fairly down to earth. When I, I see oh, down to the ground because he's short. Yeah, he didn't have leg so surgery. Short because he's um, short. <laughs> when I see Ronan Farrow, I think leg surgery. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> like all his pants just don't fit. Like he still hasn't gotten like pants that fit. The things people do to like deny. It, people will go to the ends of the earth to defend Woody Allen. And it's like, you don't need to. He already made some great movies that make you feel complicatedly about mm. his legacy. You don't need to also be like, everyone is lying mm. and Ronan Farrell got leg surgery to, <laughs> to yeah. stoke this rumor that he's not Woody Allen's child. Do you still listen to Michael Jackson? Not like actively, but to be fair... I don't know that I ever like really put on like Billy Jean and like, listened in my headphones. I feel like it was more like if it came on at a club, I'd be like, oh word, and then dance. Did you say that? Oh word. <laughs> Every single time my little white ass would go, oh gee whiz, oh word. It's the Michael Jackson. Let's dance a roo. <laughs> you could say that again. Dance a roo. Let's dance a oh. roo. <laughs> No, I um no. As a kid, I loved the Thriller album. I played that. I on see repeat, that for you. I see that for I you. I loved it so much because uh, it was also like that was like huge for my mom. So when she got me the album on CD, she was like, "This album, you need to listen to it just as much as you can. It's too good." And I was like, "Okay." And it was like that and off the wall. And I like I listened to that a lot. And I remember when I first saw the Michael Jackson documentary. This is absolutely true. Like, I watched the. So it's like in two parts and I, I was watching the first part up to the point where like one of the dudes who's accusing Michael Jackson says, and then Michael Jackson like demonstrated masturbation to me. And I was just like, Jesus. And I was going to get a haircut that day. And I thought this is a good time to stop. I thought you were saying I got, I was getting a haircut like while I was watching this. <laughs> it's almost <laughs> as bad as that. No, but so I, um, so uh, so I stopped at that point where a dude said that Michael Jackson showed him uh, masturbation. So I stopped at that point because it was just, it was very overwhelming. And I thought, all right, this is a good time to go get my haircut. So I went off to get a haircut. And as I'm sitting down, as like the first like clips start going, the song that comes on the radio. Oh. Would you like to guess which one was? It was it Thriller? No, it was much more pertaining to this was material. It um i sexually assaulted a child by it michael was, jack man it, in the mirror okay so the last bit that i saw was masturbation the song was beat it no <laughs> no it no. came on and i was and i was oh, i i had to laugh it was too <laughs> It was too good. And it, I felt so bad because it was so fresh learning that information. And I knew that it just got worse from there. I knew that I was going to have to watch the rest of it. and It was just going to be so much worse. But but I laughed so much. In that oh, my God. <laughs> oh, you know, I listened to a great podcast like around when that came out. It's a uh, it's still processing, you know, the Wesley Morris, Jenna Wortham. There are these uh, two New York Times culture writers and they're both okay. black and they were talking about the legacy of Michael Jackson and they were like, listen, this is one of those times where cancel culture kind of fails because you, Chris Brown is easy enough to like stop listening to his music. Like yeah. it's, it's, he's popular, but he's not like, you're not going to go into a CVS and hear but that he doesn't define a genre he doesn't define yeah, yeah he doesn't define a genre he also doesn't define like a generation he wasn't yeah. a once in a generation talent it's like easy enough to swear off of chris brown yeah uh michael jackson is everywhere so yeah. it's like you can't really cancel michael jackson per se because it's like it's like okay my friend works at governor's island and there's this invasive species called mugwort and I asked if he would ever, this is going to relate, I promise. What, can, wait, just very good. Is it, is it a mammal? Is it a worm? What is mugwort? Uh, it's a plant that- Okay, it's a, okay, it's a plant. The plant grows um, like horizontally so that nothing else can like grow around it. It takes wow, up so okay. much space, honestly. It's man spreading. 
the whole time he was telling me about this i was like mugwort is an abuser if you like mugwort honestly unfollow me right now (laughs) (laughs) Um, but mugwort i was like oh can you get rid of it and he was like there's no getting rid of it because even one little seed it's going to sprout back up again you just need to mitigate it and i honestly think that's a good example for dealing with artists like michael jackson is like Will I celebrate when Thriller comes on in the club anymore the way I used to? Probably not. But will I like scream demanding that the DJ like turn it off? I don't know. That would be insane if I did that. (laughs) I did. I don't remember who the comedian was, but I think, but the comedian said, if there's anything that this documentary and all like the argument around it is, he said, Sometimes you can make music that's so good it surpasses child abuse. It's just like, holy shit, yeah. And I was just like, God damn, that's like, it's a rough way to look at it, but it's kind of real. It's like, to be clear, we are not supporting child abuse. Oh I no, 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 uh, no. And we're not even supporting Michael Jackson. I, oh, by the way, I just like to say, and we're I not even not supporting chosen- children. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but I have not listened to uh, Michael Jackson since uh, I haven't since the since the documentaries came out, and I was like, and, but even then, do you know what's fun? It's like, but even before the documentaries, I knew sort of because I had heard like rumors, and I and I'd heard that he had like had kids like stay for sleepovers, and I was like, oh, he's molesting children. That's a hundred percent what he's doing. And with that, just like rumor knowledge, but everyone knew that the that he was having kids over, like. Even I, even while that was 100% known and like what was going on was sort of like dubious, I, I, there's zero chance that that wasn't happening. Well, what's and interesting it, is there are kids who swear up and down that he didn't. Like right. there's that one little boy, Corey Feldman, who ended up accusing all of these huge Hollywood pedophiles of being sexual assailants. And yeah. they were, he was like, the only one anyone ever goes after is Michael and he never did anything to me. No, which is not to say that these two right. kids were not abused by him because I 100% believe that they were. Yeah. Um, I think one of the things cancel culture deprives us of is the ability to have complex feelings about a subject or a person that aren't perfectly righteous right away. Like I felt this is going to be a huge leap, but I felt a little of this with Israel Palestine because American Jews, you know this. Yeah. are so crazy defensive and there are a million reasons for why it's like anti-semitism is very rampant obviously it's a people that comes out of oppression and when that's the case it's very hard to see that you have now like reversed your position and become the oppressor to somebody else oh yeah because you think that every single critique somebody makes of you is a desire to eradicate your people yeah so it's, it's also th- it's also that for most people they never take a second to think like how the world works where they're not at the center of it because we all see ourselves at the center of our own story and so when anyone says anything that might in effect be against you or against your group like it's there is a chance that that's just them advocating for themselves or like they don't see the effect they're doing and it's not coming from a malicious place of I want to hurt you. It's just them going, I am protecting my own and I'm ignorant of the effects that I'm causing. Yeah. It's like- Jews are the main character. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but it's like, yeah. it's interesting because it's like, we need to be able to process complicated feelings in order to get to the point of saying, this is the righteous position. Like you're never gonna convince a extremely defensive person that you're right by just yelling like don't you care about Palestinian children who are being you know bombed because what they're going to say is well don't you care about Israelis who are being bombed and the fact of the matter is what people aren't realizing is that Palestinian children being bombed are also the like Israeli people are being bombed because of this conflict that like they created you know so like there is all of this desire to just pretend that feelings don't come into play when what people need to actually do is go I understand that I am not going to have the wokest initial reaction to this but I need to get past that 
in order to think differently about the situation. So oh, yeah. if I have a moment of like, wait, what do you mean Israel wasn't a country, isn't supposed to be a country? It's not because I hate Palestinians. It's because I was taught in Hebrew school that Israel is a small being that's being attacked by 40 million other enemy countries. I know now that that was propaganda. You can't unlearn immediately, like instantly the second someone talks to you, yeah. like the things that-, that, and it's true. And the same thing's true about like someone like Michael Jackson. You can't like, un- you can't be like, I hate the song, beat it now, you know? Cause it's just yeah. a lot, you're like lying. <laughs> it's, it, it, I think, but what you're saying is like a very evolved thing to say. Like I, under, it's, it's, it's understanding where other people are coming from and understanding like, what it's like to be impressionable and have something be fed to you and so and that and that person is surrounded with like that and that's something that like not enough people like consider is like what uh what a person's upbringing was like and how reinforced like a, an opinion or music or whatever it is is just like in, infused in your life so so much that you can't unlearn it or segregate yourself from it um, yeah, I'm sure you didn't love vaccines when you were five. I hated them so much. I thought they were poisoning everyone around me. I thought that that is that is it. Yeah, that is another thing. Like I wasn't as much like thinking about vaccines. I was just aware that my parents were like, "Oh, we didn't do this with you." And I was I just sort of learned. I was like, "Okay, that's a thing." Yeah. Um, but I didn't. I didn't ever think about like because uh, like my my dad definitely would have had me think that other parents are like pumping poison into their own children right that's what like he would have had me but I never like thought about that really I just um I just I just thought oh it's okay I just everyone else is protecting me I'm just <laughs> but if you like- had who could blame you and this yeah. is the interesting thing is like I would rather any day that there be a person who used to be a white supremacist who is now contributing to blm helping the cause Mm. understanding other people then that just anyone who believes a racist point of view because they were raised that way oh yeah dies you know i that actually reminded me that like i remember during the presidential election that i saw people like posting about how bad tulsi gabbard was because of like the actions that that she did like against LGBT, like she worked at like her parents' conversion camp and let, like- Well, that's kind of fucked up. But how old oh, was, it, she, was she? Like- she was, <laughs> no, she was like in her late teens up to like age 20. And like- Cause I was like, thing. was she like five at the conversion camp? <laughs> <laughs> but- Welcome to conversion therapy. <laughs> Here is an electric node. You're gonna be straight soon. <laughs> oh my god! I'm just imagining like bring your kid to work day at the conversion camp. This is what I do for a living. Turn yeah. the gaze straight. <laughs> oh my god! No, but I saw like someone like posting like saying Tulsi Gabbard did all these things, and I was like, actually, like I, I prefaced it by saying she's not my favorite for like president. But I will say that I respect that she owned up to it. She was like, hey, I was part of this. Uh, but And the thing is, she was like, my dad was like is super Christian and conservative. I do not align with him anymore. But I was raised in this environment. I was taught to believe it. But at some point, I realized that I was doing damage. And I did a total 180. And now I'm, and now I, I she's like, check my record. I've done this and this and this. Uh, she could call for, me a for, slur. Exactly. But I, and... And I still wouldn't say that she was my favorite for president and now or before, but I will say I respect the fact that she was raised in an environment and she went along with that. But at but in her early adulthood, she re, she realized that was wrong and did something that was hard, which is to break away from like your family tradition or what you've been taught to do what you think is right instead. And I think that that deserves a lot of respect. The internet just acts like everyone grows up in the same liberal midwestern place like not from the big city but like you know liberal with liberal enough care and like the most perfect woke opinion so that when someone are they on yeah okay wait it's amex okay okay do you think do you think do you think 
listeners, what's going on right now is um, uh, Gabby and uh, Sylvie, they're about to take a, um, a wonderful trip, a vacation, and uh, they're, they're getting on a flight tomorrow, but it got canceled, and I think they're on a uh, call. They've literally been on hold this whole time. Um, and so I think they're just getting through and hopefully they're going to reschedule, get a new flight. So uh, stay tuned. I am so sorry. That is. It's okay. So hello listeners. Welcome back to Two Nosy Meerkats. Uh, I am trying to get my ass to Las Vegas and uh, American Express, which I booked with as if I'm some kind of entrepreneur or something is making it very difficult. Rapper, uh, director, writer, producer, <laughs> producer, That's entrepreneur. So they are transfer. They're trying to transfer me to the airline, and so now we're on hold again. Oh my god! I'm so sorry. I forget oh. what I was in the middle of saying. Something old and red pilled about woke people. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> it's, I I couldn't I couldn't tell you what it was if you paid me. <sighs> Uh, I think we were talking about Michael Jackson. I, I guess to wrap it yeah. up, it's like people have complicated feelings um, about stuff and you can't just go through life not processing your complicated feelings. You have to process them and then hopefully move forward. Uh, and yeah. no one- And then just come out as gay. That's just what, it, that's what it's all about. And just come out, even if you're straight. Even just if you're straight, just especially lie. if you're straight, you need to, they, they need it even more. They're eradicating just, you. I would say <laughs> less than half of all straight people uh, come out as gay. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going to come forward with that statistic. I would say maybe only one straight person has come out as gay. Actually, has there ever been like a gay Rachel Dolezal? Like a fake gay? That, wow. Ellen? Um. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god oh i'm trying to think if anyone like came out as gay for clout but it was never but it wasn't real the m&ms the two lesbian m&ms oh that was for clout they're straight as fuck but, but deep down they're just oh i've been they're to, in amy I've coney to... barrett's like catholic cult <laughs> that a... the handmaid's tale is based off of that one I was going to say, I've been to Ginger's with them. They didn't, they didn't look at any women. They were That's looking gingers. at their phones. Is that, is that a lesbian bar? I don't a know. A lesbian bar in, in Brooklyn. Oh, it's, I've heard of Brooklyn. <laughs> you've heard, you know this place, Brooklyn? I've, 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 I've heard tell. I've, <laughs> I've, this I've, tiny I've never little, been. I've never been to Brooklyn. I've never been. Oh, oh. Wait, can you? Besides our Lord and Savior, Ellen, uh, straight gal, straight rights, the generous. Do you know of anyone else who like, uh, th that the Rachel Dolezal thing is like, because it would have to be like a straight dude who guessed, who dressed up as a gay guy or. There's so many different ways to dress gay. You could literally do, it, it goes as far as like going, doing drag or looking exactly like a straight person. Whoa, are you saying that there is a variety of gay people and gay wear? <laughs> gay wear? Gay wear? Where are they? I went to the party in my best gay wear. <laughs> um, yeah, allegedly. I, I mean, I know in 2012, we all thought that they were, all gays were Gaga's little monsters and yeah. lived together in one rainbow house. But I think there might be like a variety i mean a significant portion do let's be honest they 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 and they live in the little hut at the end of the rainbow and they have a wonderful time you make them sound like leprechauns <laughs> <laughs> are uh, okay okay here's my new uh hypothesis all leprechauns are gay men but mm. not Side all your sources mla style um reasons. harvard journal review uh jstor uh, maga.com <laughs> uh, lucky um, charms why are they always hung from the left ear and not the right one i think we all i um, think we all agree um irishpeople.net.gov.co 
Um, and last but not least, um, the website for the movie The Irishman. I looked it up and they have the sources. All, all, cool. I, and, and here's another source and it's more of a primary mm -hmm. firsthand source, but uh, Lucas, have you ever noticed that there's no leprechaun babies? It's because they don't reproduce. I see. They're extinct because they're all gay. Exactly. And much <laughs> like uh, we hear from our friends on the right, they recruit. That's how you become a leprechaun is that you just get recruited into the lifestyle. And then that's, and much like leprechauns, that's where gay people come from. You speak from experience. You were recruited by the leprechauns. I was. Before this, I was a cheerleader, straight girl, Republican. Caitlin Bennett, gun girl, and I were best friends. Wait, who's that? I don't actually know. Oh, my God. It's this crazy girl on Twitter. She takes her gun everywhere. She, like, oh loves my. guns. And she's always talking about how much. And she's always like, oh, Lil Nas X is such a, is, like, a Satanist or whatever. But as it turns out, she like Venmoed some like female sex workers for nudes. So she's probably a closet lesbian. Whoa. Um, unless she was just Venmoing the wrong person with a winky face. Uh, that's a likely story. I believe it. 100%. Yeah, she, she bought like some, uh, some Cheetos from her and was like, oh, I'm being Cheetos. so bad. <laughs> I am being such a bad little snacky girl, <laughs> wink, wink. And everyone just took it way out of context. Because this girl just happened to be a gay sex worker. Poor girl. Poor, Poor girl. girl. She keeps getting, she keeps getting in these little snafus. And <laughs> I'm oh, so glad God. I got to teach you who Gun Girl is. I think it's probably the least complete description of Gun Girl ever. Listeners, if you have I think a better it's pretty thorough. description of Gun Girl, please let us know. And speaking of yes. listener submissions, we should get into this. Yes, First, let's do it. Now's the time. Little housekeep announcement. There is a new form. We want you to fill it out while Lucas and I are on a brief hiatus because I don't know if you know this, but I am traveling. Um, gonna have some summer fun, see some sights. Woo! We're gonna go on a brief, uh, possibly two or so week hiatus. And then we're gonna see you right after. And yes. in the meantime, what we want you to do is absolutely flood the form with all your weirdest shit. We know it's post-vaccine summer. We know you're up to no good. So show us, show us that you're up to no good and write yes, into this form. Yes, be bad. Be, we are encouraging children to do drugs. This is what we're doing. Oh today. no, oh no. In the meantime, we wanna, we'll do some submissions right now. Yes. And that, that'll be all she said on, on this day. On what, the what matter. If, what, if, um, what do people say that'll be all she wrote? That's oh, all. Yeah, they um, do say that. That's, that's all, all she wrote. wrote. Yeah. Wait, I'll be right back. I'm going to get my iPad. Okay. Listeners, uh, if you're still here, Lucas is getting his iPad. And it's crazy that he owns one because. What'd you say? I was talking shit. Oh, own what? What don't I own? Um, I was saying it's crazy that you own an iPad because you're a big dumb slut. <laughs> I didn't say that part yet, but I was getting there. <laughs> oh my God. I don't know why that made me so happy. <laughs> to be a big dumb slut? I know why. Yeah. Because you're a big dumb slut. Big dumb slut. <laughs> I don't know why I really like that. <laughs> All right, I've got one if you don't have one yet. Uh, please go right ahead. Okay, somebody wrote in, um, happy birthday to Lucas. This is from a while ago. Oh, uh, My best story is also my worst story and my funniest story. First of all, I really love animals. and would never hurt any. One time I was studying abroad and when my dorm room deal fell through, a friend I knew kindly invited me to live in her spare room for free. She just bought a new flat with her partner. They're kind of rich, but very nice. <laughs> That's a funny way to put it. They are both very busy and can't afford pets other than a hamster, which they loved a lot. Long story short, one day, I think I accidentally moved the hamster cage while cleaning and he escaped. When I oh. sat down to drink my coffee, I felt something nudge my foot. Looked down, saw the hamster and panicked, grabbing him <laughs> before he could go under the fridge. 
house. And then they, I can't even get through this without laughing. And then the hamster jumped into my just boiled hot coffee cup, into the coffee. I saw him swimming. I smashed the cup, ran the hamster under cold water, toweled him with my friend's face towel and hoped that he would be okay. The kitchen was a mess with my spilled coffee and I desperately tried to clean from their brand new white chairs while simultaneously checking on the hamster the hamster died two days later no! and the friend spent the whole evening crying they later invited me to his funeral oh, no. when burying him in the yard and i still feel so guilty how was i supposed to tell sorry i dropped your pet in my coffee by the way thanks for letting me stay for free I lost contact with her because I still feel so guilty, but my other friends absolutely crack up when I tell this story. I really oh. hope this doesn't reach that one friend. Moral of the oh. story is that best intentions can still have shit consequences and then hamsters die really easily. Love the podcast. Take care. Well, bad news for you, Buster. I actually am the friend. Uh, that was my hamster. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm really rich. I have nice white <laughs> chairs and... It reached me, all right. <laughs> oh my god! No, but that's fucked up. That is not so... a no, We've all. I feel like we've just all been there. We've oh, all yeah. been in a situation. Your rich friend, their house is so perfect and posh. You like don't want to even touch anything to get anything wrong, and then you like fuck one thing up so bad, and you can never tell them for the rest of your. It's life. also a living thing. It is extra worse. It is who they oh. loved. Who they I'm... loved oh my god the hamster died two days later. wait how old were they though because i had gerbils when i was a kid like eight to ten or so like i think they might have lived like up until like the beginning of middle school but like as an adult mm. i don't know if i would get rodents here's the thing they sound like adults because it's like my friend it and sounds her partner, like adults i think that this person is an adult who killed a hamster which is the absolute funniest outcome you can possibly <laughs> yeah i don't want to say no this. disrespect get a real pet <laughs> get a real fucking killing a hamster is like supposed to be a child thing i'm not saying children hmm. go around killing hamsters but it's a child activity yeah <laughs> oh god Oh, poor thing. Moral of the story is, I'm so sorry that fucking happened to you. I'm sorry that happened to them. I also don't want to discount the feelings of the hamster in that situation. I'm very sorry that they probably died a horrible death from coffee burn. (laughs) Also, who's to say that they didn't die of, was it the hot coffee or was it like the caffeine? Like our hamster. That's what I was. I was like, did this? Did this hamster absorb enough caffeine and just go ape shit, and to the point that it just like broke its heart physically or something like that? It died of a broken heart. From getting too roided (laughs) on coffee. It's crazy (laughs) when they gave that one hamster steroids. It didn't do anything like that. (laughs) Remember when that hamster broke the home run record and. okay wait i have one that is like it's it's just very sweet it's very funny all right so this is a submission and i'm gonna do a little bit of a voice because that's what i'm just getting from this okay so basically i have this kid in my class who i kind of like but the problem is in all caps he's dated two of my friends dun, he, is dun, a super, dun, dun. he is a super nice kid and both of them say it too but it's kind of weird right is this kid bad is he good He's super nice to me too. Help. Help. <laughs> That's like the Obama 2008 poster. No, help. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I thought she just randomly yelled hope. <laughs> um, she likes the guy she's dated two of her friends. I would ask the friends what dating him yeah. was like and if it's okay. Because yeah, there is like girl the- code when you're that young. You can't really date your friend's ex unless you like pretty explicitly ask them. Yeah. No, just like ask your friends, like, what's up? Uh, what's the score? And then, and then if all goes well, make your move. It's like, and like, make it very clear to them. Like, I'm not, this is not a teen movie. Yeah. I'm not here to like encroach on your man. I am telling or you, this is a teen movie. There are cameras everywhere. Just like, 
<laughs> be very clear with them. You are in the Truman Show. None of this is real. I've staged this whole scenario. That being said, can I date your ex? Yeah. Yeah. That's like, no, I got nothing to add. Just like ask your friends, but yeah, he sounds. But I he's think nice young you. girls are scared to ask yeah. their friends things. It, well, you could. Well, you could also say like, um, "Hey, I'm getting like signals that like this dude is into me. Like, uh, how? I don't know. I feel weird because like I know that he dated you, and then you'd be like, what was he like? And then just sort of like broach it yeah. like that. Well, here's the other thing. I'm thinking they shouldn't be afraid to ask their friends because the friends. He, it's not like he just dated one of the friends. He dated two of the friends. Yeah. So clearly it ended up being okay in the end that he dated both mm. of them and they didn't have like a huge all out fight over it. Just be like, I know he's dated the both of you. I want to know why it ended. And if both of them are like, he was emotionally unavailable, don't date him. If they both were like, oh, it didn't work out because of X, Y, and Z, like factor out of my control. Maybe it's worth a shot. I yeah. don't know. Munich communication. The meerkats mm. preach communication. This is yes. a really funny one. I'm very yes. excited about this. Speaking do of it, communication, my my therapist told me not to do it. This is always my favorite kind of listener submission. A mental health professional said not to do this, but what do you comedians think? <laughs> this is a, a, a strong start. But I want to hear your opinions. How would you feel if someone you ghosted reached out and sent you an exit survey? I just want to know why. Whoa. Whoa. So if it's wow. something I'm doing wrong, I can learn and better myself. It seems like every time things start going anywhere, people ghost me. They say it's not me, but it clearly has to be me, right? I just don't understand why people can't be emotionally mature enough to tell the truth. Also, happy birthday, Lucas. Thank you. So this, uh, this is uh, what I want. For some reason, when I heard exit survey, I saw a Google form. <laughs> that's what i like saw and i was like i was like oh god if, if it's gotten to the point where this person just like has a stock exit survey that they just use in the event that this will happen then you got to do a whole system reset you just got to look deeper but but i do think it's a good thing to ask like if you have a good enough relate if you if you're still able to talk to like ask the person who you were with like if it wasn't already discussed at breakup to be like, hey. Well, I think that's what? the thing. There never was a breakup. This person like probably literally ghosted. They were oh. like in the middle of talking and then they just stopped communicating. Oh, well, that has nothing to do with the person who gets ghosted. I agree. Okay. That's yeah. what I think. There's no reason to send. It's not just because it's like scandalizing. It's because it's ineffective. It's because if you send an exit survey, if they didn't respond to your text, they're not going to respond to your Google form. It's yeah, like, no. They are being emotionally avoidant. They are not ready for commitment. It definitely doesn't have anything to do with you. And if someone is ghosting, yeah. you didn't want to be in a relationship with that person anyway, because that's oh, yeah, not no. how you communicate. You do, you do not want a person who does that in your, in your life or their opinion uh, affecting your, your behavior. A hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, so glad we agree on that one. <laughs> glad um, we agree. All right, let's do one more. Okay. Um, I'm trying, I'm trying to find one. Uh... I, I have one if you're having trouble finding. Yeah, go for it. Okay. Since both of you are comedians, I was wondering if I could test out one of my jokes for you. Okay, this person oh, says, Beautiful. So I'm in high school and we had sex ed this year in science class. But the thing is, our transition from our last subject in the class was very abrupt. We were learning about planets right before sex ed. So I like to say we went from learning about Uranus one day to my anus the next. It's pretty funny, actually. Oh, that's that's cute. I, I think like that. Uh, a comedian's feedback, if I were like writing with you comic to comic, I would say you got to cut the setup by like a lot. You could yeah. say I'm in high school. Um, we learned about the planets and then immediately transition to sex ed. So it's like we learned about Uranus one day and my anus the next. Yeah. And but and then like add like a sort of like a little random like make this up like, but for some reason the planets needed more lube. Like just Oh, like, that's great. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> and the teacher never explained. They just said to give him more lube, just like just like <laughs> as an extra, just like a wild card tag. Yeah, maybe like the that. teacher like starts getting confused. It's like the te- the the same teacher taught all the subjects, so she kept telling me to put the condom on Mars. <laughs> <laughs> oh oh that's good yeah you've that's got a, something there it's a good little it's a great little pun it's it i think it's it opens a lot of doors for different avenues that you can grow it as like a bit with like other jokes at like i think it's solid i think it's a solid start i also would just tell anyone that if you want to do stand-up comedy i think you should just go do stand-up comedy yes. because if you fail it is unbelievably low stakes all the oh yeah the and you're going to build of, it up way much more in your mind than it actually is. You're going to probably try it in an open mic first. And the idea that people will sit there heckling you is not the case. Other comics are very respectful, generally, of people who are trying oh, yeah. new stuff. Worst case scenario, people will not laugh. And then you'll just rework the joke. Most likely, if you find things funny in the world, people will laugh. Oh, yeah. And also, like, another thing, like, if you're really scared about, like, doing an open mic, go see an open mic Mm -hmm. and just see how, like, wide the variety is of, like, polishness of material. Because you're going to see people that are just starting, just starting out, people who might be fairly good but are just trying a new bit and it's really rocky, and then some people who might have stuff that's, like, fairly polished. So, the you're people gonna like that, you're gonna see people who are dog shit and be like, "Well, I'm yeah, better than them." <laughs> exactly, <laughs> and you're that's gonna, gonna make you how, feel good oh, at yeah. other people's pain. <laughs> it's yeah, but seriously, you like go see an open mic, understand like what the vibe is like, and then realize, oh, I can fail here and it'll be okay. Um, so yeah, do that, and then also like if you like tell people afterwards, "Hey, this is my first time," everyone's gonna be understanding, even if you did terribly, they're gonna be understanding. Because also think about it, it has been everyone's first time before. Exactly. It's like sucks. <laughs> Am I right, Lucas? <laughs> and on that I'm... lovely note. <laughs> uh, I don't, it was just, it was just like sex. It was just like, it was, you just had this like very pure expression. It was, oh my God. I'm very, I'm very pure. I I'm also that. very plur. Peace, love, unity, and respect. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I've got I've got it all. All that and a bag of chips. Cool. Well, we <laughs> I have nothing. I have nothing to add. That was adorable. That was this awesome. has been an episode. <laughs> oh yeah. It has been it has been a saga and a half. Uh listeners, viewers, we are two nosy meerkats. We're gonna be taking a little bit of a hiatus. Um, uh, Gabby is going on a trip with her lovely girlfriend and we will see you uh, later in the month. Yes. Please keep writing into our form. We're going to have Please updates do. for, uh, you know, we don't really have seasons, but we're going to call it season two, quote unquote, yeah. to make ourselves feel official. Uh, oh, yeah. we, we are going to start making merch eventually. Lucas and I are going to yeah. talk about that offline because it would be really funny if we talked about that online. <laughs> that <laughs> bored you with our podcasting uh, Inside Baseball. We uh, just like, we did a live stream of just nonstop clerical details. <laughs> <laughs> so who's recording the Zoom? Uh, <laughs> is it a flop, uh, flash drive or uh, cl- cloud recording or local <laughs> recording? Yeah, upload it to one cloud.cc, not .com.cc. Just like, yeah, we're gonna tell you all that and more <laughs> yeah. on our on our eventual Patreon. You will find this uh, pirate copy on Putt Locker. Um, <laughs> I always pronounced it Putt Locker, but that's a conversation Put Locker? for another oh. day. I said Putt. Putt. Yeah, I ra- talked about it. My, 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 my I was gonna say it's not called said, Foot Locker. It's fu- uh, Put Put Locker you. rhymes um, with Foot Lock. <laughs> fuck you too. <laughs> Can you tell we love each other? Yeah. Love you. Bye-bye, everyone. And we'll see you again soon.